Hi, I'm Wendy Perrin from Dance Magazine, and we're here with a see and say, see and say, and this is my seer and sayer, Teresa Ruth Howard. Um, and now I can say that I'm from mybodymyimage.com. Isn't that funny? <laughs> so, so this is a joint a joint effort between Dance Magazine and mybodymyimage.com. So we went to see ABT's um, new Firebird by Alexei Romansky. Is that what I say right? Rotmansky. 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 And, um, and one of the reasons I think we, well, why, I know why I wanted to see the program. I wanted to see it because Misty was doing Firebird. But I think it's new that she was really cast in a new ballet as the, as the lead. Right, but it's, it's sort of like everybody feels like this might be the moment right. for her to be promoted. So I wanted to, I felt like Firebird was going to be the vehicle because she is, you know, the, the title character. And she wasn't first cast because the first cast went to the star, the Russian star, Natalia Asipova. And so you wanted to see it because that program. I wanted to see that program. I didn't see the opening night because I wanted I wanted to see Misty in it. Okay, so that was that yeah. was the reason. Yeah. Um, so the first thing that I thought was really interesting was that all of Black Dance was there. It was amazing. Oh, half the alien like, thing was there. The, all everybody from Airly, everybody like it was really nice to see from DTH. the community, yeah. the, the community come out for her. Yeah. Um, and then I, you kind of felt like there was something about to happen. There was like this anticipation of, of like, and you'd see people like brown people. Not to say that black people don't go to the theater, but you know, it, in this way, it's like they were coming for something very, very specific. Well, not to say that modern dance people don't go to ballet, but that is largely true. I mean, I don't usually see modern dancers at a, at a ballet performance unless I know there's someone they know, but this was en masse. Yeah, it was, it was nice. It was very interesting because very rarely do you get that feeling of like that there was like a little crackle in the air. Mm -hmm. was that? What do you think? What did you think? Well, I, I thought, I mean, the first sort of blinding, disappointing difference between Ratmansky's Firebird and the one we usually see is that there wasn't just one Firebird. It was a whole flock of Firebirds. So immediately you felt like, well, wait a minute, is this... Um, is this Swan Lake, but red. Um, so it wasn't just that change, it was also that the Firebird should be a unique creature. And when she comes out in the red headdress and the red thing, she's amazing, but you've already seen like 12 of them. I missed, yeah. if I missed her entrance. If people didn't start clapping, I, you know, she was kind of like, woo, over here, like in this. Well, yeah, because there's, there's so, so much so red on stage. There's so yeah. many of them. But that was the, the biggest faux pas, I think, in, in this version. Um, and too much is too much. It's just, it was just too much. They had head things going, they had a bustle, they looked, it looked like a Vegas show act, old school Vegas. You but Missy looked great in that costume. But, and if it had been just her, it would have been But here's the thing, I, it was just too much costume. When they were dancing, I, you couldn't see, it got in the way. And they didn't come back at the end either. Like, it was just that, so if he kind of followed through on that, maybe I would have understood it better, yeah. but it was just kind of like a moment. You didn't really get as much of her as you wanted. Yeah. But I find that even with the Balanchine version, you, you know, it's, it's sort of truncated and short. You don't get so much of the fiber. She kind of whips in and out. Uh, but but it's her by herself, so at least you, yeah, you know. Yeah. But what we did get, what I really got was the way Misty was twisting around him, and it was nice because birds usually do this in ballet. Right, right. But instead, she was twisting. It was like a modern dance bird, and um, and and it was like this bird means business because she was bird means because she was so grounded. And I liked the headdress because to me that was like flames of the fire, and I didn't look close enough to see how the headdress or the tutu got in the way or anything. I liked I liked that costume. I was really, really disappointed because I didn't feel like that that was a role that you could go like, wow, she was fantastic. I mean, she did with mm. she did a great job with it. When she comes back to save him, it ends up being a quartet, and again, she's it's not about the Firebird, and it's confusing because it's like who's saving whom in the quartet. Um, because there are four people and Katche is one and the maiden is one and 
and so there's all these interrelationships. But that quartet is in the most beautiful part of the music. And the the set design was really okay. a, a fantastic and overwhelming by Simone Pastou. Here's what I'm gonna say. I I love that it was so visual. It was like being in a Tim Robbins film. Mm -hmm. And I I got it. Kids will love Don't it. Don't think that he was very clear about oddly the firebird character i didn't get the strength of her at all hmm. the what, power what of about her. the speed do you feel it was i got speed but the whole thing about the the firebird is she's alluring she's mystical she's magical she she is entrancing and i felt like he weakened her in a way like i never hmm. felt that she had total and utter command of that <laughs> stage so that she could go like enough here what i think that he did really get and I think he understood was the maidens, the world of the maidens. And I thought he really captured they were quirky, they were odd, kind of nerdy. They and he got quirky. into their world. He yeah, got they were into quirky, their like the flex fee and right. uneven little movements. But when they got out of the spell, they turned into pretty maidens. And how no, did they, they show the pretty maidens? They were white. I mean, okay, the girls were actually white themselves, but they were in white with blonde. Wig, platinum, platinum blonde. blonde wig, and I don't know about anybody else because I, I, everything is because I'm black in my mind. I was like, maybe it's because I'm black that this is really annoying me that I don't like this concept of everything that perfection. Oh, is I'm not like. black, but I have black hair. It's like, well, I mean, no, they I don't wear wigs. They were wearing wigs, but it did occur to me like. Well, if Missy didn't have the main part, would she be able to be one of these maids? She would in a in a in a in a, in a wig. Yeah, yeah, it's true. But yeah, that was that was a really strange image of the girls liberated, throwing off their their spell, and now they're the beautiful girls. They were all identical with the identical platinum wig. So that was that there was, was icky. There, there were some issues in there. Like yeah. I, I didn't know if anybody else felt it, but I was like, that is just making me uncomfortable. Yeah. No, you know, I know other people who made uncomfortable. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad because at least we're seeing that this. Yeah. And I, okay, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna go with it's a fairy tale. So in a fairy tale context, you know that's what we're taught and that's what it is. You know, and but, so so I'm gonna give him that. Like maybe that's the image he was going for. But but um, I've seen other works of his like that. Like in Namuna, there's like forty girls in bathing caps. And they're, you know, they're in the identical bathing caps. They're not blonde wigs, but still, it's the idea of identical, and it's this vision of, you, you know, it's it's uh, like what they tell Muslims that in paradise that you're going to see forty virgins. I mean, it's this very sort of fundamental vision, it and was, I was I was uncomfortable too. It was very uncomfortable. I was um, like, oh, this this needs to end. Yeah. At the final pose. It just looked like she was. I don't. That was the she was, they kind of had her suspended and she's going oh. up and down and she, yeah. it was just, again, there was no power yeah. in that. Yeah. I think it's very interesting. So I think, I think two things really robbed her of her uniqueness and her power. And one was that there was another flock of same girls in red, yes. the same headdresses. The other was this overpowering set design because those trees were, were like straight out of your nightmare. And, and that's what made them powerful. And then when they, which, it, these clump of things that looked like hands with too many fingers that were huge, and at the tip where the fingernails would be were these burning embers. Yeah. And then at a certain point when the nightmare really kicks in, these burning embers just start. And they grow. Grow. And then they, they, do, they wilt. Yeah, and they wilt. Yeah. They do, they do shows. It was a, it was a show. In the, it in was the a show. Stuff. And the biggest show, which I think was the most successful moment in the whole thing was when those trees break open and these poor guys also dressed in white just sort of slither out of these tree trunks because they're liberated it's when the spell is broken and and you know they have been imprisoned and so she's broken the spell and the, the trees open and they were like their prisons and so right they come out and and that's where we have the happy white ending right and then, <laughs> And then, but you, you think of, so these guys were like locked up in these tree trunks for centuries or something. Yeah. It was, that part was crazy. I like that. I, I, there were things I liked about it. I just really, I don't know if it's possible to really go back into it and rethink some things. I think, I love the green section. I did. I just think that he needs to really think 
more about who that bird yes. is. I mean, here's the thing. Um, when I talk to people the next day, because the next day we went to Sylvia Waters' um, oh, her party, retirement, she, party. retirement party, so everybody was kind of there, and I was like, what did you think? And this was think the, that was at the Emily at Ailey building. And I think that everybody was sort of disappointed. It was anticlimactic. Everybody was kind of disappointed. They they were like, oh, you know, she was great, but it it was, and so you have to keep in mind that it's it's the it's one the ballet like people felt like it was her role, and it's it's not her role. So other people do it. So it's it's that role in particular. That character was not, you know, fully realized. In the way that you wanted it to be, yeah. you, you didn't root for her. I mean, you didn't really, you really didn't care in a way. There was a point where you, I mean, I cared because I wanted to see the Firebird. But if you didn't know that story, you wouldn't necessarily care about whether she's coming back or not. He followed the story with the breaking of the egg, you know, to break the spell. The cur it wasn't clear. It was a little convoluted. Now I do have to say that the Firebird is actually pieced together from several different Russian fairy tales. Mm -hmm. the, and the egg was something that Fokine used in the original Firebird. Um, did John Taras use it in the DTH Firebird? No, there was no egg. There was no egg. And the, and the balancing one has no egg. So it's, it's different. And the whole, the whole story itself is, um, I think it might be partly from a story called the Golden, Golden Cockerel. You know, there are different, different stories in it. Um, so it's sort of not clear to begin with. But to me, this story was an amalgam of Petrushka, Swan Lake, and Firebird. So, what are we saying? Like it, love it, lose it. Oh, I mean like, I would say like it, not love it, and not lose it. But, you know, I, I could go for a big change. I could go for losing all the red. I would say rework it. Yeah, rework it. Rework. Well, that's it for C and Say till next time, which is, um, who knows? Who knows what? So thank you for watching.